Okay everyone, so we're going to do a test with the BMS board switch ribbon on for the switches and the switch and LEDs. It's just a simple board in the back. I've left that connected to the board. I haven't disconnected it yet, so I haven't done a test with that. But what I am going to do is test that we can remove the balance lead, which is this one. It's a 4S balance lead um, connector on the BMS. If we remove that, does it kill the BMS or does it set flags where we cannot use it again? We're going to find out. All right. So we pulled it out, this is the BMS, but we still left the main power leads. And we'll put this back. And as soon as I put the leads back in, the LED is constantly on. So I'll shut that down. So removing the leads doesn't kill the, the entire setup or doesn't uh, set flags on the BMS for it to completely shut down and not be usable. Now I have to find a way to have constant power being applied to the BMS and then I can desolder the old pack and solder in the new pack. The purpose of this is to ensure that there is always a 4S power supply being applied. Now since this is going to be, this is the new pack that I built in the previous video, which was a failure because the BMS reset itself and as soon as I disconnected the main power cables and it is no longer usable until we can hook up a serial adapter and program it or program one of the the chips and I believe those programmers are quite expensive they're about 100 um, euros at the moment but I'm waiting for someone to reply and give me a quote on a system that can flash or reset the flags in the BMS so that is one of the problems with intelligent BMS's is they actually, they actually have microprocessors and programming on them safeguard this type of work so let's get to making a 4S, which I can solder here, and then that'll apply constant power, and then I can desolder this old pack for the new pack. What I'm gonna do is use 18650s as my dummy pack, which will just supply 4S power to the unit. All right. Let's see where the positive goes. All right, so here and here are pads we can use. We will scratch this pad right over here. We'll just double check that this is actual lines that are coming from the battery pack. So I scratched a pad next to the negative terminal and another pad next to the positive terminal. And we're going to use this. Okay, that works. That's 17. And on the battery itself, 17. So we'll use that to hook up our DIY pack, which we should just make now. And we have our dummy battery pack here. That will supply us the power. Now we have to tin the tracks that we made. Does it still work? Yes, it does. So we're getting somewhere. Now we're done with the positive. We'll go into the negative. Hopefully my camera battery doesn't die. But if it does, it can change out the battery, no problem. It's not heating up. Do we still have power? Yes, we can still turn it on. Okay, 
now for the moment of truth we are going to dis desolder this battery and put in the new battery we'll have to be super quick so we'll desolder this pack the original pack and then solder it onto this one all right we're almost at soldering temperature so i'm going to just put some fresh solder on this pad one more check before we disconnect still on all right moment of truth that's one out two out I'll just turn this around oh it's got the little temperature sensor which I need to pull out we'll just be very careful sensor out, I'll turn this battery around and then we'll solder this one in Okay, we'll just solder them properly, add some more Alright, that looks good That's great We'll just check battery voltage Because it should be draining into the new pack now no 15 volts 15.87 all right so the moment of truth does it work yes it is still on bravo so I'll have to disconnect the pack that we put in. I'll have to disconnect this one, which was the, the jumper pack. There we go. Thank you, jumper pack. And this one is a tricky one. I'm trying to desolder it without shorting anything out. There we go. Ah, oof, got some nice hot solder. Yeah, that's great. Right. Now what we'll do is disconnect the 4S just zoom in. Let me move this one, just clean it up so you can see better. Okay, we'll have to disconnect the old battery's 4S lead that gives the battery voltage for each cell, and then we'll connect the new cells onto it really quickly. 
and it might put it in hibernation mode. But if it's fast enough, it should work. Okay, so there you have it. Let's bring it up here. So this is the new pack that we used. Soldered in with the connector. And it's already on two bar. Shut it down and we'll see if it charges. I forgot which way the terminal goes. So this is the puffed up pack. Not really puffed up. It's pretty good, but it started puffing. Let's connect the charger. So this way and the notch goes that way. We'll put it up this way and see how it goes. Hope you all can see that. Moment of truth, does it charge? Double check. And it charges. There you go, folks. Got a working battery. I'm going to close it up and then go for a test. There's no point recording the closing up because it's common sense. You open it, you close it. Everything soldered. See you in a bit. Moment of truth. Let's try it in the drone. Let's do the swollen test. Nope, not swollen. All right. Uh -oh. Gimbal. Oh, that was close. Right, let's fire it up. Drone started fine. Let's see if the uh, cells register the new voltage because some experts have said if you change the cells without resetting the BMS that it would not reflect correctly the cells. So if that were true, these uh, the BMS should be reading full power because the other battery was um, almost fully charged and this one was um, still on its way charging and confirmed that it does not do that if you change the cells they won't do that they will update according to the cell data and uh, cell voltages that's given to the BMS from each cell via the um, 4S little cable and it just adjusts. So I'm happy with that. Let's look at the details. 82, okay. So I didn't reset anything on the BMS and I believe if I would do that then I would need to do this whole process that I did. Temperature is okay. Okay, so I am going to let the battery fully charge and probably duct tape it or glue it or something to keep it secure and then I will go for a test flight and let you know how it goes if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel it helps me a lot and it makes me motivated to make more videos to prove other people wrong until next time fly safe and God bless